Welcome to the March 2020 edition of Now Spinning. This month I'm going to be going over some albums that I picked up in the month of March. We're going to be going over Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style, Watchmen Volume 2 and Volume 3, Tom Petty's Into the Great Wide Open, Korn's Issues, and the main event, the Final Fantasy VII Remake and Final Fantasy VII Soundtrack on two picture discs. First, I will be going over Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style. This was a gift for my sister for my birthday, and it has been digitally remastered, which is usually a problem when it comes to vinyl editions, but it sounded pretty good. My main problem with that is having the digitally remastered logo right there on the front of the packaging, but still wasn't too bad. was on two black vinyls and played pretty decently. No issues there at all. For this record, I'm gonna go ahead and give the album itself a seven out of 10, the art and the packaging eight out of 10, and overall 7.5 out of 10. Next up is Watchmen Volume Two by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. The packaging of this is absolutely sublime. Um, I'm loving the mock album covers from the Watchmen universe. Sound quality is excellent, especially after cleaning it with an anti-static brush, and I recommend that you do that with new and used releases before you put it on your platter. I mean, look at, look at what they've done with this thing. It's just absolutely amazing. So we have on the vinyl sleeve itself some photos from fake episodes of American Hero Story. Uh, which is supposed to be the retelling of the origin of Hooded Justice. And no spoilers, but you find out who is really Hooded Justice in the 2019 Watchmen series. Really cool the way that they put this all together. So if you're a fan of the show, you're definitely going to be a fan of the packaging of these. The album itself is absolutely spectacular. This was on a black vinyl. It even came with this really cool newspaper clipping fake newspaper clipping from Tulsa, Oklahoma. So that plays into the show quite substantially. And the album itself plays great. Uh, the album itself, I give that a 9.5 out of 10. The art and packaging, a 10 out of 10. Overall, 9.75 out of 10. Next up, we have volume three, which is designed to look like a Nine Inch Nails album that was lost to time. This version of Nine Inch Nails is called The Nine Inch Nails. And this album is called The Manhattan Project with a photo of Dr. Manhattan on the front of it. In this universe, Trent Reznor has only reached Halo 10, whereas this time in his career he had been on Halo 14. So this version of Trent Reznor has done less than the um, real Trent Reznor has. I thought that was an interesting touch. Came with this really cool booklet, kind of a behind the scenes making of that you see with some of the later Nine Inch Nails releases. With this latest remastering of With Teeth, it also came with a booklet, so it's kind of interesting to see this pop up with his Watchmen release. The album plays beautifully as well. Um, we have a lot of crossover with jazz in this, uh, fitting in with, with the 1930s setting from the Watchmen 2019 show and their flashbacks. He's fully embraced jazz, as he's also done a more recent Nine Inch Nails releases such as God Break Down the Door from Bad Witch. They sound like they were produced in the 30s or 40s, which lends a lot of authenticity to the production. Uh, the only downside is there are at least five missing tracks from this. They're available for free, but they're not available on physical release. It includes a sublime cover of Life on Mars, and that really, really hurts not to have that here. But Nonetheless, the album itself, 9 out of 10. The art and the packaging, 10 out of 10. Overall, 9.5 out of 10. Next, I finally completed my Tom Petty in-studio discography. So this doesn't include compilations and this doesn't include live albums. I do have one live album from him. But finally completed it with Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers Into the Great Wide Open. It's just a basic reissue. It was from 2016. I just hadn't found a copy in the wild and I finally sucked it up and bought it off Discogs. It was only like 20 bucks, so it's not really that bad. The art pops off the cover more than the CD version, which I also have. Uh, the audio is in line with the rest of the Tom Petty box set. I have the later Tom Petty box set from 1994 through 2014, the volume two. So it's very much in line with that. It sounds great. 
learning to fly and the title track and making some noise or standouts. There's a lot of filler in this, but it's not bad filler. It's just something that you wouldn't have on a Greatest Hits compilation. Overall, the uh, album itself, 8.5 out of 10. Art and packaging, 9 out of 10. Overall, 8.75 out of 10. Next up, I have a copy of Korn's Issues from 1999. This was a re-release circa 2015, I believe. Bought this from Dark Side Records in Poughkeepsie. Shout out to them. Um, this was the soundtrack to my eighth grade middle school angst. Uh, I believe it's a better album than Follow the Leader by far. I do like the former's cover art better, but it's still iconic to me. Uh, there are far fewer skippable tracks and no Fred Durst, which is definitely a bonus to me. The sound quality is surprisingly good for a Korn reissue, and the art pops off the cover a lot more than the CD ever did. In the liner notes, you can see the alternate cover versions that were submitted for approval by Korn by fans, so we got to see that as well, just like the CD. It's good enough to rip into my collection uh, for my iPod, and it sounds just great on black wax. Uh, the album itself, I'm gonna give that eight out of 10. The art and pack gene, six out of 10, because I always thought it was a bit minimalistic, but overall, seven out of 10. Finally, last and certainly not least, something I've been waiting for for quite a while to come in. It's the Final Fantasy VII remake slash Final Fantasy VII soundtrack on vinyl. On the front of this, it's very simple, the Final Fantasy VII logo on it. And on the back, we have the Meteor from the Final Fantasy VII logo. On the inside, we have the actual case for the records. Inside, we have two picture discs. On the left, we have the remake picture disc, and on the right, the original artwork from Final Fantasy VII. Let's take a closer look at the remake's cloud side. And now the remake Sephiroth side. Now we have the original cloud side. And the original Sephiroth. Track listing is in the middle. I'm really digging the simplistic nature of it. This is what the actual case looks like when you unravel it. It looks like the Buster Sword that Cloud carries, including materia slots. It's a really, really cool package. So I like the new version of Tifa's theme, Eris theme, and the Turks theme. They're very, very awesome cinematic adaptations. So it really sounds like you're listening to the soundtrack from a movie adaptation of this game. The Scorpion Sentinel theme hints that each boss battle will have its own take on the original boss music. I did have an issue with the boss battle theme as it sounded like they replaced the guitar driven version from the original with a more symphonic version, but maybe, maybe not, we'll see. The main theme is absolutely on point to what I wanna hear from a version of that with this full symphony orchestra. It is not a replacement for the CD soundtrack from the late 90s, which I do have. This is definitely a good sampler, but it's not a replacement for that. As I said, the artwork and the packaging are truly what shines here. The picture discs are beautiful, and the simplistic black slip cover, the Buster Sword, Trifle, the inside track listing make this a work of art. My one critique with the packaging is the plastic slip cover for each picture disc crumples and makes me think it's going to tear the cardstock slot for each disc, but I might just be paranoid about it. it hasn't happened yet, but we'll see in the future. The album itself, the music itself that's contained with this, I'm going to give that 9.5 out of 10 because it's good music. The art and the packaging is 10 out of 10, overall 9.75 out of 10. I do feel like I got $80 worth out of it. Like I said though, sound quality isn't as great as it could be. Half of the album is chip tunes, basically, MIDI files put on a vinyl. So what do you expect? So have you picked up this release, this Final Fantasy VII Remake release? Or have you picked up any of these other albums? Are they in your collection? Tell me what you think. Comment below, subscribe, share, and have a good day.